What's going on guys? So today we are going to be talking about the top mid-sized trucks for 2024. Alright guys, so here we have the 2024 Toyota Tacoma. Now I like what Toyota did with the uh, redesign. It looks more muscular. Um, however, they did do away with their 3.5 liter V6. It's now a 2.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine making 278 horsepower um, and about 300 foot-pounds of torque. Granted, it does make a little bit more power, but however, uh, still yet to see how reliable this engine is. If, if it's just as reliable as the previous 3.5 liter V6 and the previous 4 liter V6. Now, this truck starting starts off at about $31,000. That is the Access Cab SR model with a uh, rear wheel drive um, and it maxes tops out at about $62,000 and that's the uh, uh, limited with like every option checked out so big huge price difference right there uh, you can still get the manual in the Tacomas which is nice um, it's cool Toyota is still keeping the manuals a lot of the other manufacturers are stepping away from the manuals it's cool they're still keeping the manuals um, I personally wouldn't drive one. Um, I, like I said, I'm not a big fan of the uh, turbocharged four cylinders. Uh, just, I'm just not. Uh, however, this would make some great overlining rig, though. I got so this is the uh, Chevy Colorado. Uh, I like the way it looks. It looks pretty uh, slick. It looks kind of. Not, not exactly like the uh, Silverado, but it looks kind of similar. The way the gorilla is shaped is shaped similarly to the uh, the Silverado. The headlights though are a tad bit different, but I like I like the way it looks. It looks very truck like. Um, pricing on this starts off about exactly like the, the Tacoma, thirty one thousand dollars, and that's the uh, work truck edition. That's with the base two point seven liter turbocharged four cylinder. Um, and it also makes similar power at about 270 horsepower. Um, it maxes out at $64,000, and that's with the uh, ZR2 with the AEV Bison package on it, and that's also with the uh, Turbo Max engine. Um, with the AEV Bison package, you get uh, boron stamped steel skid plates, you get uh, Multimatic shocks, you get bedlock capable AEV wheels, you get a sport bar with a 40 inch LED light bar on it and ditch lights by the A-pillars. Um, you also get an upgraded bumper for a uh, better approach angle and um, departure angle and breakover angle. Um, personally, I wouldn't drive one of these. I think it's a little too much, a little too expensive for a uh, mid-sized truck, but uh, it, is, it is a pretty decent off-roader. All right, guys, so here we have the uh, Jeep Gladiator. Um, this truck is for that person that likes to go overlanding or rock crawling. Um, that's what this thing was built for. Um, I like it. I like the way it looks. It looks very nice. Um, my dad actually had a, a Jeep Gladiator and he fucking loves it. Um, the only issue is if you get the lower end models, so like the Sport, Sport S, and the Willys. The ride quality right out the factory is completely terrible. Um, the shocks are terrible. So if, you, if you're going to get one of the lower engine levels, you might want to just upgrade the suspension um, first. But uh, these things make great trucks. Um, you can get right now two engine options right now with a turbocharged four-cylinder engine and a uh, naturally aspirated uh, V6. Um, you were once upon a time able to get a three liter turbocharged diesel in this thing, but Stellantis decided to cancel it from Jeep and Ram. Uh, pricing for these things are all over the place. You can start off, I believe the Sport model starts off about $33,000, $34,000, and you get the Rubicon with all the goodies on it, you're looking at $75,000. So huge, probably the biggest price difference in the, this uh, mid-sized truck segment, probably one of the more expensive ones on this list. Um, Towing-wise, this thing tows class-leading at uh, 7,600 pounds. Um, 
the only other truck that comes to it is the Chevy is the uh, Chevy Colorado at 7,600 pounds well they're both tied for first place um, the only other truck besides the Colorado and this that comes in close to the Gladiator is the uh, Ford Ranger at uh, 7,500 pounds but would I drive one of these I I personally would own one um, again I'm not off-roading all the time so I don't have a need for one of these but if you're the type of person that likes off-roading all the time, every weekend, or you like overlanding, this will be the perfect vehicle for you. Huge aftermarket support for them. And yeah. All right, guys. So here we have the uh, Ford Ranger. Uh, pricing starts off a little bit less than the Gladiator and a little bit more than the Colorado coming in at $33,000. Um, max pricing comes in at six or fifty eight thousand uh, dollars now with the engine options unlike the Colorado and the Tacoma you, you actually have some engine options to choose from you have the uh, 2.3 liter turbocharged four-cylinder EcoBoost which makes 270 horsepower and 310 foot-pound feet of torque now I know previously I've said I don't like turbo four cylinders but this EcoBoost has been proven to be reliable in this uh, segment now the next engine is the 2.7 liter uh, turbocharged V6 that makes 325 horsepower and 400 foot-pound of torque and then finally the last engine is the 3 liter EcoBoost uh, which comes in at 400 horse or 418 horsepower and 430 foot-pound feet of torque now my thoughts on the Ranger it is a very good looking truck I love what they did with the interior and the exterior with the redesign it looks a lot more fresh a lot more new the other one looks very outdated and old uh, I love it would I drive one yes I would definitely most definitely drive one all right guys so here's the uh, Nissan Frontier now this truck comes in a lot cheaper than all the other mid-sized trucks coming in at uh, $29,000 and that's with the uh, King Cab S model uh, two-wheel drive. The most expensive is the uh, Pro 4X and that comes in about $48,000. Now engine options, unlike the uh, Ranger and the Gladiator and the Colorado, this truck only has one engine to choose from and one output and that is the uh, 3.8 liter naturally aspirated v6 that's uh, connected to a nine speed automatic transmission power outputs is uh, 310 horsepower 281 foot pounds of torque uh, now what do i think of the truck it's a very good looking truck very boxy muscular looking truck and i love it i love how old school it is i've seen a lot of people talk trap shit about the fact that it has hydraulic steering I personally like that because it's, it's going to be more reliable in the long run. Um, now, would I drive one of these? Yes, I would most definitely drive one of these. There you guys have it. There's uh, the top five mid-sized trucks in the market right now. Now, there might be a few of you guys wondering why I didn't include the, uh, the Honda Ridgeline, and that's because it's not a truck. I mean, it has a pickup bed but that doesn't make it a fucking truck, right? The El Camino had a pickup bed. That doesn't make it a truck either. It's what the Australians call a ute. It's a car with a bed, okay? A truck is a body on frame vehicle, okay? So the Bronco, the Jeep Wrangler, the Forerunner, and the uh, Nissan Xterra are all considered trucks because they're body on frames. The Ridgeline, is a unibody but anyways guys hope you guys like the video go ahead hit the plus button comment below what other topics we should be talking about i'll catch you guys later peace